I want to uh, take a little time to refute some of the bigger criticisms of my prediction videos. And first I want to start with another quick primer on a psychological bias known as the backfire effect. The backfire effect occurs when, in the face of contradictory evidence, established beliefs do not change, but they actually get stronger. So an example might be, let's say, you know someone who believes that Bigfoot is real. You know, you show them video of the same guy walking in the Bigfoot suit and they take off their Bigfoot costume. So by all accounts, that should change their mind, but it doesn't. They might say, well, uh, they can do a lot with computer graphics these days. Or they might say, you know, they might even venture into the pure absurd. And they'll say, uh, well, for all we know, that Bigfoot knew it was being filmed, so it shapeshifted into human form to throw people off. No, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> So the, the human mind is, is just a fucking a playground of insanity. Now, you know, of course people do this with religion all the time. And politics. Actually, there's um, there are research papers that show people are more likely to change religions than their politics. But enough on that. Uh, there's a point to this video, and it's to address the handful of major criticisms that I get on my reasons why I think Trump will win the presidential election and Clinton will likely lose. Likely, uh, just remember likely, just remember that. Because at the end of the day, this is all speculation. Criticism one, you're a partisan. No, I'm not. I don't think people understand what partisan means. It's just one of those words that people like to throw around because they've heard it thrown around so much on, on political talk shows that they listen to. A partisan is someone who's basically like a football fan. They root for their team, through thick or thin. In many cases, they don't even know what the fuck their candidate stands for. As long as they have a D or an R after their name, they're going to vote for them. That's what a partisan is. I am not a partisan. How could I be? I'm registered independent, and I don't support any of the candidates. I don't support any of the candidates at all. If I had to list, you know, f I guess full disclosure, if I had to list... Uh, my liking of candidates in, in order of most to uh, least li liked, probably it'd be, um, you know, Jill Stein would be the first, uh, then Gary Johnson, then Trump. And Trump is, you know, a very distant third. And then uh, Clinton, who would be, I mean, almost off the scale <laughs> as, off, as far as, like, uh, liked, disliked. But, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, yeah, because I really dislike Hillary. Again, full disclosure, I, I don't know how else to put it. I don't like her. Um, it doesn't sway my assessments or my ability to objectively predict outcomes. Uh, I don't form my opinions on the election with my emotions. So I use numbers and trends, and um, as far as emotions, I, I predict by gauging other people's emotions and attitudes. Clinton is the status quo. I don't think the, the status quo is working. Trump, you know, he's more establishment than he lets on. I'm not fooled by any of his bullshit. But I will say this. He's going to, you know, so he's going to uh, toe the line on most issues. But Trump is out for himself, ultimately. And I think he wants to go down in history as being, you know, the people's president. So I think he's, if he gets in, you're still going to see roughness around the edges. But I have a feeling he's going to disappoint both his most virulent haters and some of his hardened supporters or hardest supporters. And funny enough, it'll be for the same reasons. He's not going to come through on much of what he's saying. Uh, I do think he'll attempt to fix trade, and I think he'll tighten up border security. You know, but the, the country will remain largely on the path it's been for the last 20 years or so. And when Trump gets in, and the sky doesn't crumble, and the oceans run red with blood, and locusts don't devour the flesh of the innocent, I think he'll have a lot easier time getting re-elected uh, should he seek re-election. He is a, and you know, he's a 70-year-old man, so he, for all anybody knows, he could be dead by then, but McCain made it through two terms of Obama, which everybody, you know, a lot of, one of the big reasons a lot of people uh, didn't want to vote for him because they thought he could die, he was so old, and everyone thought he'd be dead by now, so who knows what'll happen. Criticism two, America is diverse. Uh, Trump's base lacks diversity. His message only appeals to white men. So uh, this is what I would say to that. And I'll break this into part A, part B. So part A would be 64% of America is white. 
Uh, 64% is an overwhelming majority, assuming that every white person of voting age was voting Trump, which, you know, they're obviously not. Uh, that would be a huge victory if they were. But, uh, I, you know, if uh, we'll see what happens. Um, the next largest ethnic group are Hispanics. And, you know, we all know Trump has pissed them all off with his Mexican border wall, right? No. And, you know, full disclosure, I am of Hispanic descent. And, uh, you know, let me tell you, um, n liberals seem to think that, you know, all Hispanics is, that's not, there's nothing inherently racist about saying, well, the Latinos, it's like, oh, thank you, white liberal. I'm so happy that you're so culturally sensitive. No, you know, this is, uh, all Hispanics are not a big happy bunch, so, but, uh, that's just some personal insight, but, uh, Trump is polling at levels, you know, based on numbers, Trump is polling at levels similar to Romney during the 2012 election among, you know, for, uh, demographic purposes, Hispanic voters, quotes, Hispanic voters, like, again, this is a large group, this is a large diverse group from, you know, if you look at South America, Central America, the Caribbean, this is a huge diverse group, but for the interests of the Census Bureau, you know, you're either white, not Hispanic, black, not Hispanic, or Hispanic, so, anyway, let's not forget that, although Obama won fairly comfortable, it was still a closer election than, you know, many would like to admit, especially considering the turnout what the turnout was for Obama in 2008. So Americans are jaded. They're jaded. Also, Trump is, is polling higher than Clinton among second and third generation Hispanics. So it's not what the numbers say, but how you break down the data. Like, obviously, uh, an immigrant right from Mexico you might say, uh, I don't like what this guy's saying because it might mean I can't bring the rest of my family over or, or who knows. But people who have been here in their second and third generation, they see themselves as American. They don't see themselves, you know, even though their cultural identity, what they what they recognize first and foremost is is their Americanness. And you know, for a lot of people, not not everyone, but for a lot of people, uh, especially like if you're moderate, then you, what you see first is uh, your way of life is is going to be American. And you don't really care. And on that note, you know, Mexico is actually having a border problem as well along their southern border. So a lot of people don't realize that many of the illegals who come in through Mexico come in through Mexico, but they're not actually Mexican. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize. They're Guatemalan or uh, Venezuelan or, or all kinds of things. So uh, <clears throat> part B, though he's um, unlikely to win the black vote, Many black Americans agree with him on most of his message, and this is something that um, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people realize. Again, this is one of those things where, and I hate to use this kind of terminology, but white liberals, and we all know who I'm talking about. And, you know, it's not meant to be divisive because I, I, I'm, I consider myself kind of a classical liberal, but um, white liberals like to kind of, uh, they think that everyone can just, anyone who's non-white can just fits into one big happy basket but not the basket of deplorables, <laughs> a different kind of basket of people. You know, all women, blacks, Hispanics, uh, Muslims, uh, you know, all this kind of thing. They all, they all, uh, my, the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. But no, actually, there's, there's a lot of overlap between many different groups, and there's many of those groups don't have any overlap at all. In fact, they're at bitter odds with each other. So, um, you know, something that people fail to realize is that many blacks are kind of more conservative, you know, um, not fundamentalist Christian, but I guess you could say that it's like Protestant Christian. And some of their values are more closely aligned with kind of the traditional was considered the traditional Republican values. So they agree with him actually on most of his message, Trump. Uh, they agree with Trump on most, a lot of his message, you know, and especially uh, parts relating to um, unemployment and uh, being sold out by Democrats. You know, they all, I think a lot of people are more switched on than ever. So between now and November, anything can change their minds. Criticism three, Trump is one continuing scandal with a cascade of personal and cultural insults. This one uh, requires multi, a multi-tiered answer. Uh, one, personal and cultural insults. So, air quotes, personal and cultural insults are not nearly on par with a 45-year history of scandals and corruption. Especially when you consider that Trump's scandals or being painted as a scandalous person in the media is a fairly recent phenomena. Uh, so, two, I would say that 42% of Americans are independents. And uh, it's, it's not the partisans that will decide the election, but those who are not affiliated with either party. 
and also first-time voters. So the Democrats, they like to emphasize this idea of diversity, but I think sometimes they underestimate just how diverse America is, like really is. And uh, not just in, because they only see things in terms of uh, voter blocks, and they don't really understand that America is actually quite unbelievably diverse in opinion. And so, you know, this is why I see, I, I think that um, the fact that such a high percentage of Americans are independents, it's because they're thinking independently. Maybe not in a long time, not for the first time, but they're thinking independently, um, a lot more so than I think the two parties realize. And I think that's why a lot of people are kind of taken aback by why would a Democrat ever vote for Trump? Or why would, you know, a, a, a Latino ever vote for Trump? Or why would a Muslim ever vote for Trump? But you'd be surprised what people's reasons are, and you'd be surprised how diverse um, they are uh, as far as opinion-wise and intellectually. So uh, three, voter alienation. Now, I've already mentioned this ad nauseum. In, in many other videos, so I, I hate to have to touch on this again, but she's, I, I feel like I need to reiterate it. She's lost most of the Bernie vote. And again, like I run in so many circles, and not just online, but in, in my personal life. My, my roommate is actually a, uh, he's, he's been a Democratic voter, a Democrat, a registered Democrat since, uh, since the first time he ever registered, and he voted for, um, he's in his 30s as well, as well as I am, and he's voted for Obama twice. And he's voted for, uh, like, he's he's pretty much what you would call a partisan. If there's a D after their name, he votes Democrat. And this is the first time, and it's a re really quite shocking, this is the first time where he supported Bernie, and now he supports Trump. And people tell me, oh, that people like that don't exist. Yes, they do. They do exist. So, uh, you know, the, she's lost the Bernie vote. Her Reno speech was a disaster. Um, you know, she alienated, you know, that... Uh, the kind of middle American white vote, and uh, she was even forced recently. She was she did this the strange basket of deplorables comment, and as far as the basket of deplorables comment, she was forced to backpedal on it. So I mean, she's on the ropes, <laughs> you know, and you're walking backwards. And you don't have to be an MMA fan, but if you're walking, if you if you're moving backward away from your opponent, there's a good chance that that's uh, you know you're you're going to get taken down. So attacking voters is a serious no no. And that's what she's been doing. Four. So th th here's the fourth point. And I I've kind of made this this point uh, quite a lot in other videos. And I hate to have to make it again, but unfortunately, I, I seem to have to. So the truth doesn't matter. And uh, speaking of unfortunate, that's very unfortunate <laughs> for the human race and planet Earth. Uh, the truth doesn't matter. Perception matters. So Trump is a master psychological manipulator. Right or wrong? And, uh, you know, sometimes the tools of manipulation can be used for the right purposes. You know, sort of like paying off a, a, a politician. You know, if Greenpeace pay, pays off a, a politician to save the whales, this is a good thing. But when you consider that the means of, of uh, conservation was, was corruption, it, it kind of makes you think, like, fuck, you know, the system kind of kind of worked, but it kind of didn't. So, right or wrong, he has the ability to uh, perform what's known as pacing and leading. Now, if this is something you're not familiar with, I'm going to have links in the description. I'm going to take screenshots. You can see this. I'm not making this up. This is a psychological technique. Hypnotists use this, and uh, psychologists use this, and it, it deals with enhancing persuasion and influencing uh, behavior in others. Also, advertisers use this. So, you know, if you want to talk about psychologists versus an advertiser, uh, one is actually trying to uh, use it for thera therapeutic uses, and the other is using it for mind control. Mind control. Jesse Ventura, <laughs> thermite paint. Um, <clears throat> so five, Trump support is hardened. I keep again. I got to reiterate this. Trump support is very hardened. So Hillary support is very soft. That means that no matter what he says or does at this point, they're going to walk over hot coals and they're going to crawl over broken glass and they're going to scale mountains in order to vote for him. If you put you know, if you put uh, a voting booth on top of Mount Everest, I guarantee you at the top on voting day in November, you're going to find a couple of, at least a handful of Trump voters up there. You're not going to find any Hillary voters up there. So Hillary support is very soft, and a lot of people who vote for Hillary are voting for her because they don't like Trump, not because they like her. That's a big deal. So that mean, what that means is that they could switch their stance at any time. Or not vote at all. They might not vote at all. Hillary support is so soft that her potential voters, they could stay home that day. You know, they could stay home that day for any reason. That's how apathetic they are. If it, if it rains, 
on Tuesday when it's time to vote and they look outside and say, oh, it's raining. I was going to vote for Hillary, but I, I, I'd rather not get wet. They'll do that. They literally will cost her the election. That's how soft her support is. It's like maybe they do support her, but they don't really support her. And like I said, Trump vote, uh, Trump supporters are, are diehards. So, and as were Ber- uh, Bernie supporters, and some of them still are. And, and God bless those people. They actually have, uh, in, as far as, you know, um, their passion. Like, I appreciate that in, in people. So, six, and, and the final thing that I'll say here is that uh, Hillary's latest scandal. So, as far as, like, Trump scandals versus Hillary scandals. Her health issues are real. Her health issues are real. And even the mainstream media has had to admit that she's sick. Although, you know, in the beginning, when they first reported on it, on 9-11 of all days, <laughs> on 9-11 of all days, she fell. The towers came down on 9-11, and so did Hillary. She came down on 9-11. 9 Always remember. Never forget. Um, so, although, when this happened, she, uh, the mainstream media, they didn't want to say anything at first. And then, uh, of course, they were forced to say something, and they were like, oh, what could it be? What could it be? And then I guess Hillary's people got to the mainstream media, and now if you if you watch, uh, you don't have to take my word for it again. Go back through. I mean, Google search this, uh, set it so that you can look through the timeline, like it's to the earliest to the most recent posts. And um, you'll see that some of the early reports said, like, oh, we don't know. Uh, she fainted. It was heat exhaustion. That's what they said initially. It was heat exhaustion. And then I guess Hillary's people got to the mainstream media. Now it's the official narrative is pneumonia. So it's obvious to um, anyone with a medical background that upon viewing her fainting spell, her n- pneumonia fainting spell over heat, over heated, you know, whatever they want to call it, video that and there's several um, there's several angles now that you can see. And she even lost her shoe. She even lost her shoe. I mean, come on. So that that video, all those videos, all the different various perspectives from um, the, the various footages that you can watch online um, that that occurred at the 9/11 memorial, you can see that this like uh, it looks what resembles more of a an epileptic seizure, and that um, is not even so much that her poor health is the scandal. Like that's not what I'm trying to say that her poor health is the scandal, but the media collusion to cover it up, and the amount of horseshit acrobatics that her hill shills were doing. On, on Twitter to evade the truth of this cover-up was epic. Epic! Epic! One person even tweeted out that Hillary's health was not a big of an issue as Trump supporters virally sharing a quote-unquote neo-Nazi image. <laughs> Do you know what her neo what this neo-Nazi image was that they were referring to? Pepe the Frog! <laughs> it was Pepe the Frog! Oh, please! Oh, please! Oh, man. Anyway, uh, those are... So those are the three uh, biggest reoccurring criticisms that I receive on a near daily basis. So that's why, and it's it's probably from a bunch of correct the record shills who get paid fifty cents uh, a shit post. But I thought I'd address it, you know, just to further clarify positions of mine and and also uh, sort of uh, get a little deeper into my methods of analysis. <laughs>